I would not have. Hi. Welcome back to All the Tea About Your V. This week um, we have Miss Katie May. I'm pretty sure you've all seen her before in some other video on my channel. Star again. Sure. Someone, someone's you're, gonna... like, you're like RuPaul and I'm like Michelle Visage. Yeah, I think the video is going to pop up here. Uh, that one. We're drinking tea. Well, it's actually coffee, okay. but we're talking tea about the V. This video is <laughs> periods throughout the periods. I'll play on word for you. Wow. Well, Friday afternoon. That's great. So, <laughs> got some facts about how women coped with periods throughout the periods, but also what they used to do. They didn't used to use the pads that we know didn't today. Didn't have packs. Didn't have that. Didn't have the moon cup, did they? <sighs> Point dream. Yeah. Point We're going to watch a video. It's called The History of Menstruation. Um, it's a little mini documentary and it's good. And there's a lot of info. Can I just look at hand? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why do some we people say men menstruation? Some people say menstruation. Menstruation. But menstruation. some people say menstruation. Do you know, if we put that at the end, just a little tidbit. Let's carry on. Who says menstruation? menstruation. <laughs> and who says menstruation? And who Sorry, says menstruation? Menstruation, menstruation, let's go. 3000 BC, <laughs> we all remember it. Before Christ. The, the fifth century, <laughs> they made tampons out of little wooden sticks wrapped in lint. Mm -hmm. And they used to put little wooden sticks up their vagina. Yum. A little remedy in the 15th century. They thought if you burn a toad, put his ashes in a little bag and keep it round your neck, that's going to stop your cramps. But did it? You've heard it here first. In the medieval times, mm -hmm. they used moss. Moss from the ground? Moss. Oh no! <laughs> that's going to give you some infection, isn't it? It's going to smell. It's gonna, well, they all smell anyway, but, oh no. Then, got a bit better. Went into the 1800s and it was rags. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a bit better, but it's not. That's where on the rag comes from, isn't it? That's on the rag. Thing. It's not ideal, but it's a bit better. 1850s, we're gonna go to a sanitary apron. Basically, it was like <laughs> a rubber apron that they wrapped on their bum so it wouldn't leak onto their clothes. I'm going to find a picture and I'm going to put a rubber apron here. Just right there. Ooh, nice. So, rubber. but not under, not un, under, <laughs> under carriage. Just like a, it was like an apron on back the, on flap. A, an apron, but At the reverse. Yeah. Oh. So well, like a normal apron, but just put it on your back and So they're just like kind of so it didn't free, leak. free bleeded though. But it didn't want, yeah, but they didn't want it to leak on your clothes, clothes. So right. put some rubber mm -hmm. on your clothes. Mm -hmm. We go into the early 20s, which is cellu cotton, which is when they started developing the cotton for pads. Mm -hmm. But nurses used to use it when they were wrapping the men up in the wool. Oh, right. Yeah. Bandage, and they were like, this is really absorbent. Steeled some. And put it in on my, my pants. pants. So, late twenty sanitary belts. Mm. Mm -mm. Uh, that's also hilarious. Put another picture here. Uh, yeah, there we go. And it was a belt that they wore, but underneath the belt was a little piece of cotton to um, stop the bleeding. Well, I think I this know. was still kind of going on, and up until like the seventies, yeah. because <laughs> mine now was like, back in my day. <laughs> She's oh, I still, yeah, yeah, my great, I know my great aunt did, I don't know, I know that. Why does it need to be kept up like that? Like, why does it need to be kept? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm very confused about the whole thing. We'll learn but, about uh, it. We'll yeah. learn about it soon. Um, in the 1970s, we go to sticky pads and tampons. Whoa, they, they oh, yeah. ball game. Wow. Sticky pads That's... and tampons. <laughs> We're going to watch a video now. Okay. Periods. In English, we call it Shark Week or Ant Flow. In Spanish, it's called La Regla. La Regla. La regla. There we go. It's called Taima or the I Big Ant. Yeah. No matter I how we call it, every woman throughout history with a function and reproductive system has experienced it and dealt with it in various ways depending on what time in history they lived in and where they were from. 
Nowadays, pads, tampons, environmentally friendly reusable cups, and super absorbent panties are women's allies during the toughest days of their menstrual cycle. But what did women do before these were invented? Not because menstruation is rare, but because women were shamed into not talking about it. Menstruation is embarrassing, it's shameful, it's something that nobody should know about. The truth of the matter is it's just a biological fact of nature, and it's a sign that your body is working well. That's Alyssa Stein. She co-wrote Flow, a book exploring the cultural history of menstruation, from the myths surrounding it to the role of advertising in how we view periods today. Like in ancient Egypt, as you said, people would use um, rolled up cloth or bandages, fabric, People used, well, free bleeding, and people would bleed onto straw or hay. Would use, people, I read, like a wood pulp or like soft wood to use in a sort of a tampon or a pad sort of thing. Things that, that would protect the back of your clothing. Like I've seen rubber aprons. One of the earliest and most peculiar mentions of menstrual rags was thanks to Hypatia of Alexandria a revered astronomer, mathematician, and philosopher who was admired for both her wits and beauty. Stories tell of a student that had an intense obsession with her. He pursued her so forcefully that Hypatia had to scare him away by throwing her menstrual rag at him. There was, and in some places, Hypatia. Is it Hypatia? Legend. Legend of the banter. We should all throw our and menstrual rags at men. Ah, uh, yeah. Bloody pads, tampons, Watch out. get your cup out, throw it at, throw at, it. at a man. Cup to the face. There was, and in some places yeah. still is, a lot of superstition surrounding menstruation. For example, Jewish law prohibits couples from having sex during a woman's period and for 10 days after it until she is submerged in a special ritual bath oh, called mikveh. Other religions also had their reservations when it came to menstruation. In all ancient religious texts, women needed to be separated. It was because they were considered unclean. Thinking of ways to make their lives better or to treat them well wasn't a top priority for anybody. So, <laughs> is this still a thing or is this ancient Jews? Ancient Jews. So, if we were around then, we would have to be separated from people for up to seven days. Um, Sounds nice though. Yeah, maybe it's so. I can't see the downside, uh, but that's just me. We should start it. We should start it. You won't see me. Seven, seven days. days. Early menstrual products. Let's go back to the late 19th century, to the introduction of the first female sanitary contraption, the Hoosier Sanitary Belt. This chunky device held a washable or disposable menstrual pad in place using elastic bands and metal fasteners. Despite its uncomfortable design, women were still using the device well into the late 70s when the adhesive pad and tampon became more accessible. It was for wealthy people. When the first tampons and pads came out, it was for wealthy white people because they were the ones who had extra money. Poor women couldn't afford it, so they just used what they could. So it was usually rags that got boiled at the end of a period and reused and stocked up in a closet. Do you change your life for one week because of that time of the month? The word period. Is that Courtney Cox? It is Courtney Cox. <laughs> YouTube. Monica, what are you doing? That's definitely her. Yes. We well, both thought something. I read about this. It's something like um, it was the first time that period was ever used yes. in an advert, and that that wasn't that long ago. It was like this is like the eighties, early nineties. Yeah, world. In reference to women's menstruation, was set for the first time on American TV in a 1985 commercial for Tampax, starring Courtney Cox. That's just 34 years ago. Remember, there's a feeling with Tampax. It can actually change the way you feel about your period. The absorbent material in menstrual pads was first was used by World War I nurses, who realized that cellucotton, <laughs> a type of cheap bandage made out of wood pulp, was incredibly head, absorbent and convenient to use not only on wounded soldiers, but also to absorb their periods. 
After the end of the World War, there was a lot of Selu cotton left over. There were leftover bandages from World War II. That's how you know they had warehouses of leftover bandages, and that's how it happened. That's how the whole entire industry started. The billion dollar industry came out of leftover stuff in warehouses. So it wasn't even like somebody had this light bulb moment and said, "You know, these poor women—they've been struggling for." You know. Yes, we did that. The nurses. The nurses. My mom's nurse. <laughs> she did that. Amazing. You know, millennia. Let's create a project, a, a product for them. It was just a way of using leftover bandages. Using this technology, Kotex launched its first sanitary pads and the first marketing campaign for women's menstrual products in 1920. Its name originated from the napkin's cotton-like texture. Kotex. 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 But more than a play on words, it was a marketing strategy. Women were embarrassed to enter drugstores and ask for sanitary pads, so the new name allowed them to discreetly purchase the product as well as establish the brand's name. In fact, you didn't even have to interact with anyone to purchase them. They had a table, and then they'd have packages wrapped in brown paper wrapping, and you'd leave money on the table without ever having to talk to somebody about it. So that was their original marketing gizmo, like gimmick for Kotex. Was you like quietly take a piece of and what they're yeah. trying to do? Yeah, yeah. But that's really obvious. To go to the table of brown, brown paper, paper packages. <laughs> that's what she's on about. Tied up with string. string. I love my little Kotex. sanitary pads. <laughs> but going up to the table of brown packages and then leaving your money. What if someone just came and stole that? Can you just doing that in Tesco? Just going up to Tesco and like dropping money off. That's mad. That people were so ashamed, though. Only reinforced the fact that menstruation was shameful and shouldn't be talked about. The menstrual cup is popularly considered the most innovative menstrual product of our time, but actually, it came into existence in the late 30s. The first menstrual cup was created by a 30s. Did not know this. I thought I was revelation. She thought she created the fucking menstrual cup. <laughs> I was a menstrual girl, <laughs> a menstrual cup girl, but no, that's mental. To set. It was created by American actress and inventor Leona Chalmers in 1937. She called it the Tassaway. But at the time, the mere concept of inserting a foreign object into their bodies made women uncomfortable, let alone empty it out and reuse it. So in 1963, Chalmers' company, the Tasset Inc., went out of business. Tampons were also invented in the 1930s and offered even more freedom of movement than the pad. But although they were available, not a lot of women used them for the same reasons they didn't use the menstrual cup. Women don't want to put things up there. Very true. <laughs> the modern pad. With the grooviness of the late 60s and Whoa. 70s came the freedom of the adhesive pad. No more belts and straps. The first beltless pad was introduced by Stay Free in 1969. They called it the Maxi Pad, and it was an absolute success. By the mid 1980s, the Hoosier belt began to disappear, and the rest is history. Decades after its conception, the menstrual cup is slowly but surely making a comeback. Found that they were not only safe, but could also be a viable option for women in less developed countries who have no access to disposable menstrual products. In fact, there are menstrual cup companies that do just that. One of them is Ruby Cup. For every cup it sells, it donates one to a young girl in East Africa. They also use their funds to carry out reproductive health workshops for the girls and their communities. Yes! So there you have it. From rags to medical grade silicone cups, menstrual technology has slowly but surely advanced. And for the sake of all women around the world, we sure hope Aunt Flo's visits will continue to get easier to handle. Shut about time. Why is she... Why? I oh, know. Why? Is she doing that? No, we'll talk about her book. I like how this woman is like, you know, this, not sorry, not her, the, the stock photo woman. Yeah. She has a cramp and she's like, that's what happens. Move their body. <laughs> Move it. I got no cramps anymore. What have we learnt?
don't put moss in your pants. Don't put wood sticks up your vagina. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Menstrual cups are actually around in the 30s. But sexism and outdated views of women's purity. Got rid of them. Got rid of them and they're the best. No. Aren't we lucky today to have all the things that we do? Who would have wanted to put a belt on? A hoser belt? Hoser. Hoser. Hoser belt? Hoser belt. You don't want to put a hoser belt on. <laughs> Who wanted to put a stick up your vagina? Not me. Can you buy a hoser belt now? Next video, we're testing them out. We're going to test out the hoser belt. I feel like it sounds like Canadian. <clears throat> <coughs> hoser belt, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. So subscribe. Um, subscribe. She said it. I said it. So you do it. <laughs> all. All the stuff. Please. People, I see people watching <laughs> my videos. Nice. We've had this conversation before. So, something about 600 people watching. Why are you not clicking subscribe? Why would you do that? I'm here. If you're searching for women's health, women's periods, reproductive health, all sorts, Please. other things, and general laughs. Yeah. And you're not subscribing. Well, about wash my hands, will ya? I'm done. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned a lot about periods throughout the periods. <laughs> oh, I went for a really uh, alto line. Um, periods. Thanks, bye! <laughs> B roll, blooper reel. Fun stuff happens behind the scenes. Well.